So what's this that I just drew here? What's this thing? That's a symbol for my battery. I'm going to put a plus on the bigger tab. All right. Let's say it's a 9-volt battery. Let's say my V, and you might see V, V, the S might stand for source. V source equals 9 volts. Um, and then over here, I'd have a resistor, R. Um, I don't know. Let's say my R is, I don't know. Let's say it's 120 ohms. Okay. Sorry, that's a crappy ohm symbol. Oh, so uh, um, units for resistance are in ohms. Voltage units are volts. And, and we use R for resistance, V for voltage. And our, there's volts. And for current, we use a capital I for DC, and we have little I, little V and little I for AC. All right. All right. So here's where your probably your big point pool is going to come on, on the exam is doing these little circuit analyses. All right. So I have nine volts. Um, that I'm applying to this, the simplest of all circuits. I've got, and this resistor could be a light bulb, for example. All right, it could be some resistive property. Light bulbs, I'll tell you right now, the filaments of light bulbs are non-ohmic. And that's what I have students do. We, we, we'll, we'd run some of these through voltage, various voltage measures of the current, and you'd actually um, see this perfectly straight line coming out of your data. If I actually took a light bulb filament and did the same thing, you'd get a curve. All right, so light bulb filaments are non-ohmic. Um, but at a certain voltage, it is, you would get a certain amount of resistance at that point. It's just, it's just a varying resistance. The, higher, the, the more volts you put, the hotter it gets, and the more resistance is in it because every, all the atoms are going all crazy, and you can't get your electrons through as efficiently. Um, but let's say we had this nice, simple situation. We have our resistance is 120 ohms. We have our voltage over here is, is, uh, 100, is, is 9 volts. The question is, how do I measure current? How do I measure voltage? Well, here's my device. This can measure actually both. Um, I also have, let me show you what a, a simple box version of this looks like. I had one out here. Well, let me just say, over there on the top shelf, you see those boxes right above that red sign over there? Sure there are these boxes with slanted faces with white face, and they're, they're basically voltmeters and ammeters. And they have a needle that goes back and forth, and you have two terminals on it, all right? Um, and you can just use some alligator clips, and you can hook them into your circuit. The question is, how do you hook these into your circuit? Um, to measure my voltage, it's easy. I, I put my voltmeter, I turn it to my voltage position here, and I, over there I'll just take a, a meter that measures voltage, I'd hook up two wires to it. And I typically, I like to use a red and black. Um, red we put on the positive side, black we put on the negative side. By the way, this negative side we call ground. You guys are listening to this, right? This is ground. Guys, let's focus here because I've got a lot of time left here because I've got to run and get my daughter. So that's ground. All right. We call ground our lowest voltage reference. All right. Just like with heights, I can call height zero anywhere I want to. For voltage, same thing. I can call any, any voltage I want. I can say, okay, here's what I'm calling zero voltage. And I can go up from there as positive voltage, down from there as negative voltage. All right. So if this is at zero voltage, up here would be at, if this is a nine volt battery, I'd be at nine volts here, and I'm at zero volts down here. All right. Um, so if I were to take my meter, and you notice I have a red terminal and a black terminal, it's very easy to measure voltage. Much easier measuring voltage, measuring voltage physically than it, is, um, than it is measuring current, 
All right. It's easy to measure current. It's just harder to put it in, to, to put it into your circuit. This is this I just have to touch two things and it's an instant reading. The other one I have to unhook my circuit, and do something. And I'll show you what the difference is in a second. So to measure my voltage, what I do is I can actually, if this is a bare wire and doesn't have any shielding on, these do have shielding on. I have to actually have bare wires, or I can, these are sharps so I can maybe poke into my wire. Um, I can just take and touch my my red and black here, and this thing would turn up to it would show nine volts. All right. And if we had a battery, I, I could pull it. I have a nine volt battery here. We should we show that. And a fresh alkaline battery, it'll probably be like 9.35, 9.45 volts. Nine point five six volts, fresh battery. All right. So, so, and all I'm doing is basically, I'm, I'm, so in other words, one terminal of battery I was just touching was here, the other terminal of battery was there, I just went boom, and I measured the voltage. All right. If I wanted to measure the voltage across, and when I talk about voltage measurement, I'm talking across the device because I'm putting my, my probes on either side across it. My resistor, I can do the same thing, and I'd measure the, the voltage here. So anyone want to guess what my voltage would be over the side of the circuit? It's going to be 9 volts. The reason why is this, all right? We, we talk about dropping voltage, all right? As I use up, as, as my electrons actually do work and slow down, essentially, um, they lose some of their energy, and en energy is electrical potential energy, which is voltage. And so our voltage will be, will be diminished as it actually does some work. All the work's being done right here. So I've got nine volts of work being done through this resistor right here, and it'll actually, it'll act, this is actually uh, where all my work is being done. So as I, if I have nine volts here, as this current falls down this big, tall nine-volt hill, it passes through here, and all my work is done uh, through this device right here. And so I'd have nine volts of voltage drop. We would call this a voltage drop. And if I measured it right here, I'd have nine volts here, zero volts there, and I'd, I'd, I'd have a nine volt uh, reading there as well. All right. Very easy to do with a voltmeter. I always put it right across here. And but there's a t there's a name for that configuration. I'll tell you what that is in, is in a second. All right. If I were to measure my current, so I'm going to just draw that on here. Here's a voltmeter. I'd put. I put my wires, and they could actually ask you this on the test. Show me how you measure the voltage of this device. All right. So I would just do this. I would show. All right. Here's my voltmeter. So voltmeter equals nine volts, positive nine volts in that configuration. All right. By the way, if I flip my probes around, I get negative nine volts. All right. Um, how do you measure current? So voltmeter, we go across the device. And, I, and I, there's another word for that I'm going to tell you in a second. Um, my current, I actually have to, how do, you get, how do you think I'd measure the current of something? Current is what? What is physically current? It's a, like flow of water in a river, right? In fact, the river here is our wire, and the water in the river is our electrons. So we want to measure flow. How would you suggest you would measure flow on a river? Take a water wheel. Stick a water wheel right inside your river and let it see how fast it spins. So in other words, I actually have to get the river to go through my device. So what am I going to have to do to my wire here to do that? I'm going to put a water wheel right there. And that water wheel is called, uh, I'm going to measure current. This is called an ammeter. These are two M's. Ammeter. And this is called a voltmeter. All right, and so I actually have to put my current measuring device called an ammeter right into my circuit and have this current flow through it to measure it. Like a, but there's not little there's not a little water wheel in there though, but there's something that does essentially the same thing. Now, the only thing I got to be careful about is this: um, I don't want to put a water wheel in the river to measure the speed of the river that would actually change the speed of the river. All right. Well, yeah, in electricity, what's the, the equivalent of massless frictionless? I want something that's zero resistance, all right? So this one I'd want to be very low resistance so it wouldn't affect actually the current flowing through, all right? So somehow we'd have to have a device that doesn't affect. So we could have a big fat wire in there or something, but somehow we've got to actually measure the current. There's, there's way that they actually, uh, one thing you can do is you can actually create a, 
we've done, I think, have I, have I shown you this? We've, we've, coil of water creates a magnetic field. Electromagnet, you've made one before? Is that on over there? Here's an electromagnet right over here. Oh, yes. Boy, you guys are good at turning stuff off. You turn it off everywhere. Oh, I, I pulled apart the circuit. Sorry. I pulled apart? Yeah. Um, what do we need to do to put it back on? No, uh, we won't. I don't got enough time here. Uh, coil, of wire, coil of wire, there's two ends of the coil, through a nail, or a bolt in this case. And by the way, I built this when I was younger than you did, so I was building an electric motor with this. This is one of a quadrature, quadrature, quadrature motor. This is one of the four uh, poles on the motor. And, uh, <laughs> so if, if I hook this up to a battery, my nine, actually I can do this. This will work. You ready? And now I'm thinking more like he bolt that, I don't know. Okay, ready? Let's see if I can, this is not a magnet. All right, you ready? Let's see if I can pick up this ball. Easy. Tell me you haven't done this before. I haven't done that before. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you guys haven't made an electromagnet before. What are you doing for me? What are you doing with you guys in school? I mean, you're right, teacher. No, libraries are filled with books. You know, we're gonna teach us books. They have all the knowledge. What do you mean with this in school? You're a teacher. All right, so, so here's the thing. We can put an ammeter in, in, in line with our circuit that measures the current. We can put a voltmeter in across this way to measure the voltage, all right? So my question is, for this circuit, what's the current going through my uh, resistor? What do you do? Well, what equation am I going to use? V equals IR. We're going to assume this is an ohmic resistor. And what do I do? I want to find the current. So I equals... V over R. My voltage is 9 volts. My, my resistance is 120 volts. And I get what? Good job calculating there. <laughs> Which is, by the way, 75 milliamps. All right. There's my current. There's Ohm's law working for you. All right. All right, let me do, I did two more things to get you started on this, and this is a good spot to start having you work on this. Ready? We'll do this quick. Same circuit, nine volts. I'm going to put 120 ohm resistor here, and I'm going to put a 60 ohm resistor here. You ready? This is important. This is getting the circuit analysis, and this is where you're going to earn a, a, a chunk of points. All right? I want to know the voltage and currents through every, in every portion of the circuit, all right? What are the key rules for our charges that I told you to remember at the beginning? Key ideas? What? Opposites attract, yep. And same charge and repulse, what else? <laughs> Where are your notes? Where are your notes? Right there. About eight slides back. About 15 slides back. Oh, yeah. Charges are conserved, all right, and they're quantized, all right. Um, so let's 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 keep those in mind, all right. You ready? Now, uh, first of all, I'm going to ask you if I were to measure the voltage across, voltage here. By the way, um, if you're to use geometry, what would you say that line is relative to that line? Parallel. They are parallel. This is called a parallel circuit. All right, and I could add, I could do more, I could do more things in, in, I could have multiple things in parallel. This is just showing two things in parallel, all right? So I could put more and more and more of this. Um, how do I hook up a, a voltmeter, in parallel or not in parallel? In parallel. I put it in, the voltmeter goes in parallel with this thing, right? So voltmeters go in parallel. So my voltmeter is going to go right here to measure this, right? Here's my voltmeter. It goes in parallel to my resistor, okay? Here's my voltmeter, okay? So here's my voltmeter. You tell me now, what's the voltage in my voltmeter? 
Well, my resistance here is 120. I'm measuring voltage. You were talking about current here. Why is it 9 volts? I added this thing on it. Isn't it going to change it? But it's not there yet. What's not there yet? This is still here. This is here. I've got, if I've got a, now first of all, let me, let's talk about current flow here. So I've got current. This is going to go back to our, one of our key ideas. So I'm going to have current flowing. I, which direction is my current flowing? Um, this is positive. This is negative. Well, the question is, what kind of charge carriers? Is it positive charge carriers or negative charge carriers? You could view easy either. You can buy a book that uses positive charge carrier. You can buy the same book that all the publishers print it. You can use negative charge carriers. Um, my, like my physics book when I was in college, uh, used uh, negative charge carriers. But uh, these guys are using the same book for physics, and they're using positive charge. Same, same publisher. All right. It's arbitrary. All right. If I was using electrons, which I tend to like to use. Which way are your electrons going to flow through this wire there for my current? Here's an electron right here. It's going to go which way? Electrons want to go towards? Well, which way is my electric field in here, I guess? My electrons are going to go that way, right? They're going to go towards the positive side of the battery. Right. Well, they're going to come from over here. An electron right here. This is the negative. Remember, this is like the, ne the negative charges on a plate. And these are the top positive charges on a plate from before, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right? So our electrons are going to flee from it this way, and they're going to come back around over this way, all right? Yeah, and if I have 1,000 elect electrons that go this way, how many are going to come back over this way? 1,000 because conserved. charge is conserved, all right? Now, my electrons are going to come to a junction. They've got to make a decision. Some are going to want to go this way, some are going to want to go that, guy, that way. Which way do most of them want to go? The one with what? Most resistance. Most resistance? Yeah, Least resistance, go. right? So you're going to see what, you're going to want to see more current. You're going to want to see more current. So right, let me call this I source. Let's call this, I'm going to call this R1. Let's call this R2, all right? Um, I'm going to have I2 will go through R2 here, and I1 will go through R1 here, all right? Now, if you're using a positive charge carrier, you just flip the directions of these arrows. That's all, all right? So my, my, my current will split up here. Has, has charge been conserved, or did we just break it? I got my system here, right? In fact, when this charge comes back around, where is it going to still go towards? It's going to come over here. It's going to meet back up, join back together, and I've got the same amount of current. All right? So I have my source current is right there again. All right? So more wants to go this way than that way because there's less resistance. How much more? I should have twice as much here as I do there. So, yes, two bonus points. Two-thirds goes this way. One-third goes that way. Very good. <laughs> All right. Now, um, so I took the same current I had before, same circuit I had before. I added on another resistor to it. Let's calculate how much uh, current I have. It. Now, my next question is, how much voltage would I have if I measure the voltage right here? I don't know. Well, how much voltage drop do I have in wires? You only have voltage drops where you have resistance. How much resistance is in wires, in ideal wires? Zero. Zero. So how much voltage am I going to measure here? If I move my wire over here, my probe over here. Are you saying no or nine? Nine. 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 <laughs> how about if I do this? If I kept this one up here, I move this down here. All right. So what if I move the bolt? So voltages are same in parallel circuits, all right? Current is divided reverse proportionally, you know what, if you know what I mean? In parallel circuits. Let's calculate now real quick. You ready? And then I got to go on this one. This is, now, you guys will read on, 
on series circuits and finish this chapter up because this gives you a good start. All right. Um, by the way, the fact that all these currents added up together, I source equals I1 plus I2, that's really charge conservation. Um, Kirchhoff's current law, got this Russian guy Kirchhoff, he, he said this, at any node, the sum of the currents in any node equals zero. And here's what he meant. Anything going into the node, he treats as positive. Anything ne out going negative. So he basically said that I source is positive going in, minus I1 going out, minus I2 going out. You guys said what's going in equals what's coming out, right? Well, here's what's going in, positive. Here's what's going out, negative. Everybody agrees that equals zero? That's Kirchhoff's current law. All right. Let's do a quick calculation here. 9 volts, 120 ohms, what's the, what's the uh, current then? I uh, equals V over R. That's a good calculation. You did that in your head this time. Good. What's the current over here? It's going to be double. All right? You do the math, and it's just like Andrew projected. All right. This gives you a good start on analyzing circuits. The other type of circuit, if you put the thing so the current goes through all, the same current goes through all of them, it's called a series circuit. And we put our ammeters in series in a circuit, we put our voltmeters in parallel in a circuit. All right, so we have series circuits, parallel circuits. Finish up chapter 18. It, that's the basis of it right there. I get, got you a good start on it. You'll be able to finish it pretty easily now. I'll put some web assigns up so you can practice problems and get feedback on the questions. And this, this just gave you a big chunk of points on the test what we did today. And I, I got to run because I got to get my daughter. Oh, you're welcome. Yep.